place order here in Monterey. I'm alone here in the office. I've been uh, answering some phone calls to people who are concerned, and I'm making a lot of phone calls to people who are in vulnerable populations, just checking up on them. And also here in our campus, uh, we continue the mission that God has given us by housing and feeding the men of the iHelp program hopefully for the duration of this shelter-in-place order. So they're going to be here on our campus for several weeks, it looks like. The I Help teams are coming here and are preparing the food for them for dinner and for breakfast. Um, I'm really proud of our congregation for doing this, for being available to these folks. For me, this is, uh, this is what Christian ministry and Christian faith is all about, uh, being generous in moments where maybe it's not so easy to be generous. And uh, you're all a part of that. Your faithful giving, your prayers, your commitment to these ministries make that possible. So I just want to say thank you. I also wanted to offer up just a little word of encouragement to all of you as you begin this. Uh, parents at home with kids for who knows how long, I'm one of you. I want you to know that I see you and I know that this is going to be hard, but I have every faith in you and I'm praying for you. Parents who are trying to suddenly be teachers, uh, man, what a task. You're up to it. And for the teachers who are at home trying to figure out distance learning and and how to keep our kids engaged and growing and, and, and keep them from being fearful uh, throughout all of this. You guys just aren't paid enough. I can't say thank you enough for what you're doing for our kids. To all of you at home uh, in Monterey or wherever you are as you're watching this video, um, hear this psalm uh, from this morning's lectionary reading, Psalm 5. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Give heed to my sighing. Listen to the sound of my cry, my King and my God, for to you I pray. O Lord, in the morning you hear my voice. In the morning I plead my case to you and I watch. For you are not a God who delights in broken things. Evil will not sojourn with you. The boastful will not stand before your eyes. You hate evil things. You destroy those who speak lies. The Lord abhors that which is deceitful. But through the abundance of your steadfast love, I will enter your house. I will bow down toward your holy temple in awe of you. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before me. For there is no truth in their mouths. Their hearts are destruction. Their throats are up in graves. They flatter with their tongues. Make them bear their guilt, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Because of their many transgressions, cast them out, for they have rebelled against you. But let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them, so that those who love your name may exult in you. For you bless the righteous, O Lord. You cover them with favor as with a shield. For thousands of years, God's people have turned to the Psalms in times of, of trial and troubling times and, and moments when we weren't quite sure what was going to happen. People have turned to the Psalms. And in the Psalms, we learn that people have felt the way we have felt before. And in each generation, they have responded in faith, calling upon God. I love this Psalm. I will bow down toward your holy temple in awe of you. Through the abundance of your steadfast love, I will enter your house. It reminds me of the scripture in the New Testament when Jesus says to the Samaritan woman, a day is coming when you're not going to worship at a temple. You will worship in spirit and truth. I think that's appropriate for this moment because in this moment, we can't get to the pews. We can't hug each other and share a donut hole at the fellowship table after worship. We're, we're not going to hear Jason and the band playing. Margaret and John aren't leading the choir. We're not in our earthly made temple, so to speak. But we can worship in spirit and truth. We can read scriptures day by day. We can hold each up each other in prayer. We can be there when other people need things like uh, running to the grocery or for prescriptions. And we're, we're putting a list of people together right now who are going to be able to help us do that. So just let me offer this last bit of encouragement. You are beloved children of God, sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked as Christ's own forever. In this moment of trial, know that we're praying for you. And we know that you're praying for us. Trust in the Lord, and we'll get through this. Amen.